Dereda kukua, ne joe modo sio no, ne pasta wa holi le vimo, we 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 we, uria wale mume merekia waduru muka, uria na mwiniwe gato, uwe toa Helen Mudhoni, reu ne e yumere tienaka heana deto etale ya igwe karenge, e ye mwini muna atawe wa haku he muno makeria uwe toa ide, diwa ili mo, muno siegi uria kihiko gya ke, kia kandiruo, Helen Augeta ate, we mwene ni oi, ona ni asama ni tiena mudrume osio we daga kuhikia idethi, ona idethi ajika proposeru wali. Here ni noa rona, na ate ake nire muno makiri ya oha do ginya ahe ili idethi na baya fudi, wake wagu agetumithie. Ate ona he pasta wega to waho li rezimu, akiuga ate ni arona idethi akia barara ziko igu. Kam ede olele mesi ili ya ate ni odo wake hikole Na lele mefango ya kuhele ya kole kare O hikiwe kandero uu Ide zi akiuga ate mari na hele ni ida lele rio ze Orodo kire hawe Gatoro kande tone ate we dona ga red flags Dine wa relationship iyo yao No hele ni ne asio naka Hawe niho ide zi adhine kanire ginya akia bia kwela mami wao Ate ni ya Kwa hivyo tali kiti ya wira wa kethi arenda kukua Ede Aka ugaate hele ni Newe wa motiri dhiri ya mieri eo ikomi Aki ugaate moiso moiso Au manire na kuirekera we mwene Na adu wagi othe Na ke hele ni aka ugaate Araho era ide di agena uge Wago kurana Ritana liria libre ya ke Woi Eyo ne kirende ti wanina E tatika Rewu okia da kukura credit Ya safari com Eya tele kana telecom Toraho dhira mpesa Hau halipa na mpesa pay bilire Oka mimida business number ya 378 378 Accounti oge kira naba ya kuyadhimo Amounti oge kira mwigana wa credit area Oreda kukura We kira pini ya kuri Uga confirm ate uragura kuma kwa tu bonge plus Hau hau Uka mwkira ea taimu ya kuzimo ine Hapo hapo hatire korea maregu Na ugekoro dore na kashi mpesa ine ya ku Doka make doka ule goro don't beat your heart Amu na ufuliza ea time Na ugegega dhena ogo the oke gura li Doto me message ere mpesa megogo so keria watu mabesa Kwena baya 456 Wamo kira otaithio hau hau Na tamaka e ni oko menyare u reverse call ni u razi miruo Mundo wakwa Doko le kire ndeti We igire ke emergency Within the same period Edith rekindled relations with a long time friend And with it came a promise of marriage But first a proposal Before she got the proposal And before all these arrangements happening she was, of course, a girly girl, and we would just talk girly stuff. And God, of course, God is the center of everything we do. And when she got proposed to, I remember I was so happy. I was really happy. And we were looking forward. We even shared uh, the fundi who makes my clothes. I sent her to the same fundi, and the preparations were going on well. I even met the, the person. We were going on so well. But I remember in the middle of all that preparation, there's a pastor who is very well known in the country who called her and said, Edith, you're about to go to a season that will promote you into another dimension. And she told me, and we were like, nah, of course it's marriage. So we were praising God, we were happy, and we came for all the processes until almost the very end. At the very end, the wedding was cancelled, and Edith went through a period of isolation that threatened to dim her shine. I felt like I went through a, a season of grief because the loss of anything would take you through a season of grief. And so there was denial. And there was uh, the moment where now you kind of just release yourself and you're crying, you're beating yourself. There was the place of, um, you know, um, inflicting pain on myself, that, that period of, of pain. Um, there was also a period of, you know, feeling ashamed about um, a lot of things that had happened in my life. But then the good thing about going through that season when you're in a season of isolation is that God allows you to go through that without the interference of external environments. 
So basically, I went through it all. Helen was persistent in the friendship, despite efforts by Edith to shun her, and became part of a critical support system in that period. She pushed me to the limit of opening up my life to her to those levels. I needed somebody to cry with. I needed somebody to um, to help me be angry. Sometimes you just require somebody to be angry for you. You know, you just tell them, can you imagine? And this person is honestly angry, and that helps you. So. Helen was that for me. She would come to my house and we would spend nights sometimes <laughs> crying, you know. <laughs> so she, she helped me cry. Yeah. And, um, and we'd pray. We'd pray, we'd cry. Um, um, through our crying, through our anger and our outburst, it helped us move forward. And, and once we cried, we would release it. Now it's gone, we are angry. Today we are angry. And um, it, it really, it, it helped us in the, in the process of healing. As they went through this period of healing together, Edith started seeing things for what they truly were. We went through the whole story with her and there were so many red flags. And I've never seen them. I was blind to them probably because I was cute, I'd wanted it to work. But while we were going through it with her, it was clear that what had happened so painful was God's best will for me and for my life. Um, I think also just getting back on track in ministry, just understanding that, you know, your assignment is still not done. Because I remember in, at my lowest, I looked at my mom and I told her, Mom, I'm done. I think my assignment on earth is done. Mm. And I told her, Mom, I just told her those four words. I told her, I want to die. With such thoughts lingering in her mind, Edith had to come to a point of forgiveness. And this was not easy. Forgot to, um, you know, acknowledge that you've forgiven that person. You need, to, you need to go to the root. You cannot forgive from the branches or the leaves. You've got to go to the root of the issue and actually forgive people and pray for and pray for these people, you know. So I had to go also go through a, a season of forgiving people. But guess what? One of the people I had to forgive was me. I had to go back and I had to forgive myself for things I had done to hurt myself and for decisions that I had made that I had hurt. And I had to now during that period of healing was when I had to ask God, Lord, now heal me. Now I'm ready to be healed. Um, and this time, this whole time I went through it alone. I, I didn't allow the, I didn't allow like a therapist to be in, you know, in there, whatever, um, I don't know, psychologist or whatever. It was just me and God. Yeah, now I'm going through therapy, but therapy is coming much later after me and God had, have, have gone through that journey. Throughout that period, Helen had it rough as well, but through the Lord, she was able to find strength to be there for her friend. I had to just lock my emotions, even whatever I'm going through, because even me on my personal life, I was also not well off. I was going through a hard punch, but somehow God gave me the grace that when I'm in that house and when I'm with her, it was never about me. It was always about her with a reason and a purpose. And I believe God made it that, God made it so, because she needed my full attention and she needed somebody to be in her shoe. So. God gave me grace that I actually it's now that you have spoken about it <laughs> that I am now realizing it was really never about me. God sent me there in that house as a vessel and I keep telling people it's more like a woman when she gives birth to a child no matter how thirsty she is she cannot drink her own milk. She cannot. So that milk was not mine. So the strength was not mine. It was God. He's the sense. He was the source of the strength even because even me in my personal life I needed strengthening. But when I got into her house God would just apply that strength. A key indicator of what the Lord is doing in Edith's life came when that season of isolation ended and she did the song Nitasimama. When I did Nitasimama and when I sang it, I sang it prophetically. I think I'm one person who, being a minister that I am, even when I am sick to the point of death, nobody will know. I'm very confidential about my weaknesses and I'm very loud about my achievements because I prefer people knowing that God can do and I like talking about my weaknesses when I've gone through them after I am done because I like them being a reflection of where God has taken me from. I never want to be the reason someone will question the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. Like, if Edith is doing this, then 
is God really there? You know, I, I never want to be in that place, you know. And that's why I will keep smiling, even when I'm breaking inside. So when I did Nita Simama, it was prophetic. I was, I was anything but standing. Ni mesi mama, kwa rehema, na nema yake. Ile garama, ya uhai wangu, yesu wa melipa yote. Mimi sito kufa, sito zimia, nitasi mama kwa wima wake. Not knowing where the song was birthed from and seeing how people accepted it and loved it, I could just see God through it. And also I saw her being affirmed by God that I told you I am with you. I will never leave you and not forsake you. Even the songs that she has done even after that, they're still circulating and healing so many broken wounds and so many testimonies are coming out of that particular song and so many others. It's God. It can only be God. And, and so it just teaches me as a person that if you don't have anything else and you just have God, you're good to go, my friend. As Edith continues in her quest to stand again, her friend Helen acknowledges that God is yet to do far greater and bigger things. There are aspects of my life which I wouldn't necessarily say I'm still standing. And um, especially with regard to um, being able to be associable again, um, relating to people, especially to that place of now leading to um, marriage and, and that kind of thing. I think what I've gone through, I still now need, um, and that's what I've told you, I, I found wisdom in, in going through therapy because now I think it's that place of my heart where now that, that part of me needs to reconcile. And I think that one has, has a journey. I'm praying for her above everything else wisdom because there's no doubt there's a calling over her life and a big one, bigger than even maybe she can realize. So she needs wisdom, divine wisdom from God to walk this journey because maybe she will get to a place that I cannot answer her question. She has outgrown me, which I would totally love. And as of now, I can clearly say she's not the baby I used to feel like I want to protect. She's a grown woman in her own rights. And as she makes, because I know she'll even have international collabs, I'm speaking in prophetic now. I pray that God will always give her wisdom. Because if she prospers and if she does well, it's a win for the kingdom. And that is why we are here. Geri Fotera, sese ni amo senene ko kumahadhini wa YouTube. Geko uriona gete yoto kia wagu subscribe, go share, na go comment kia dawa video eno. Nadu kariga nero ondi go trumirira dhini wa TikTok na Facebook. Musenene ko ni, titago musenene ki. We got two.